when we were talking previously about education, mm-hmm. uh, they they say in our education here that uh, HIV and these uh, STDs came from Africa, which is not true. Gonorrhea was brought by white people, oh, so is HIV, mm-hmm. syphilis, all this. We, we never had these diseases mm-hmm. here in Africa, but now they are here mm-hmm. and they are being a problem. So uh, it's something that uh, that we we as a society need to confront. Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Janita Mai and this is the Repat Podcast. Now I'll let uh, my co-hosts introduce themselves. Uh, Sheru Rampora, I'm a Pan-Africanist mm-hmm. and a businessman and I'm honored to be here. I love interacting with you people. It's always a pleasure. You're welcome. O'Shea Duke Jackson, Sacramento, California. Let's get into it. Okay. Now, Mr. Ampora, I was watching your WhatsApp status and you put up something that actually caught my attention. You said the HIV status in this country is on the rise. Yes. And people are not being caref- as careful as you'd expect them to be. Mm-hmm. Could you expound on that? Yeah, it, actually that status started from uh, an article that is in the papers uh, about uh, the high rates of cancer. Mm-hmm. in our country mm-hmm. and this is not only our country it's all over africa and all over uh communities of poor people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everywhere there are poor people they are facing a high influx of uh, hiv high influx of uh, cancer mm-hmm. and other uh, cro- chronic uh, illnesses mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. like heart diseases mm-hmm. and you find that most of these are lifestyle diseases that yes. we have okay Uh, for example, if you see uh, HIV, is that you know we have the youngest population in the whole world here mm-hmm. in Uganda. These are very young babies, mm-hmm. so they are just uh, having reckless uh, sex mm-hmm. uh, that exposes them to uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Mm-hmm. But uh, before we even go there, you remember our our when we were talking previously about education, mm-hmm. uh, they. They say in our education here that uh, HIV and these uh, STDs came from Africa, which is not true. Gonorrhea was brought by white people, oh, so no. is HIV, syphilis, all this. We, we never had these diseases mm-hmm. here in Africa, but now they are here mm-hmm. and they are being a problem. So uh, it's something that uh, that we we as a society need to confront mm-hmm. and fight. When HIV came around the 90s, I think it was early 90s, no, 80s. Mm-hmm. A lot of people caught it in in in, in Africa, and uh, because it was something strange, a lot of people lost their lives. It was mm-hmm. Like uh, uh, like 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 uh, something that, that that happened in a quick span. Mm-hmm. I think almost every family lost ten to to five to eleven people. What? Yeah, it was yeah. it was bad. It was dangerous. Was so, but we we found a way around it. How to control it? Uh, uh, people protecting themselves uh, say when they're you know. Having uh, yes. sexual encounters, mm-hmm. uh, people trying to be careful, abstaining, and all mm-hmm. that. But now, because we have a very young population mm-hmm. and we have a high numbers of unemployment, mm-hmm. so these young people are forced to go there recklessly to to have sex, and they get exposed because they do anything for money. Mm-hmm. So they get exposed to to these STDs, and this is not only here. This is all over. Where you find black people, because these diseases mm-hmm. do go to poor communities. Mm. They affect people who are poor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll tell you an example. We're seeing that uh, in America, mm-hmm. African Americans are more exposed to HIV. They are more exposed to heart diseases mm-hmm. and uh, cancer, because they have poor healthcare systems, mm-hmm. and they are poor. They can't afford the good, uh, decent uh, healthcare system. Mm-hmm. So we have to sit back and say. What can we do? And look at uh, you know the figures are not good right now mm-hmm. uh, uh, because I was seeing that for cancer uh, here in Africa, mm-hmm. I mean in Uganda for example, we have uh, out of a hundred thousand people, I think we have up to thirty thousand. No, no, no. Yeah, close to thirty thousand people who are who are who have cancer. That's a, I, I'll get the statistics right. Uh, I'll get them on the. You, pr- you probably put them on the screen. Okay, but that's a, that's a that's a big that's a big figure, 
So what we need to do is to look at these figures and say, what's the problem? And when you look at them, you it, it comes close to poverty, mm-hmm. unemployment, because mm-hmm. people are looking for survival. Mm-hmm. And uh, when people are faced with a choice between survival and morals, they choose survival. Because mm-hmm. you first have survived, then you think about morals. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's not very bad here that we, we have nowhere, but but we're in the city, we're in the metropolis, and people have to, to put up with life like how it is. Yes. And uh, people have to look good, have to do what? So we we have to be careful with mm-hmm. this. So this is what my status was talking about. Mm. It went along also to say the things that are causing cancer, and these are not restricted to here. Like uh, I saw one of them was refined foods, mm. which is the meal for a regular, uh, you know, black people, black person in America. In America, yeah. Yeah. So refined food are just murdering people. It's like a weapon of mass destruction. Mm-hmm. This factory made food. Uh, the other was uh, being obese. Yes, people yes. not exercising, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know the, our community is, is is prone to that because people, you know, they, you have, you have first survive and then you. Yeah, 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 yeah. First of all, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Mm. So and the other cause is uh, you know a, a poor lifestyle. If you don't you don't sleep enough, you don't have mm-hmm. enough sleep. If you're depressed. Poor people are depressed. Mm. So th- this, this is a big challenge that we are facing as a race. And when you look at uh, our white people, they have z- these diseases, but they have good healthcare system. Mm-hmm. They have they eat well. Mm. Majority, I'm not saying <coughs> all of them. Mm. Uh, a few who are poor are facing the same challenges. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I was talking about. Yes. So let me ask you this, because yeah. um, I was having a discussion inside of um, our office. Yeah. And... I know this is not the same, but people were talking about mental health illnesses. Yes. And in the West, when you were talking about how whites have access to certain things, they, yeah. they can be treated. Yeah. yeah. But those who don't have yeah. are not. Yeah. And I was, she was telling me that if you have mental health illnesses in, U, in Uganda, mm. you're looked at completely different yeah. than you are at, like, say, if a person's bipolar in America. Mm. And a lot of us in, in the diaspora don't understand how people... For example, with the mental health illnesses are looked at here. Mm. What what's the difference between a person who have a mental health issue um, in the community mm. in in Uganda yeah. in comparison to what may be happening somewhere in the diaspora? Okay, uh, uh, you see, the good thing about diaspora is their healthcare system is well advanced. Mm. They give it a, quite some attention. You have insurance coverage. Yes, you have all that which we don't have here. Here, uh, the you know, it goes back to see when these African governments got independence, most of them were preoccupied with how to maintain power and serving the people. Yes. So things like education, healthcare, uh, infrastructure were secondary. You had to first stock weapons or else they were going to remove you like a, like a chicken thief. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. chase you next day. Mm-hmm. So these guys stocked up in weapons. So you had to buy weapons. If you want, you say money for, for hospital, they, they wouldn't buy it. Up to now, the biggest Spending budgets globally is just money, is, is weapons. Mm. So, so for African governments, which have small budgets, almost all our budgets go for weapons. Mm. So, so we don't have a social uh, healthcare system that is, uh, uh, that, is, that is there set up by government. Mm-hmm. The, the one we have, the, the government hospitals are overwhelmed. So, when, when, so the main diseases, the challenges we've been facing are HIV, malaria. These are the big diseases that we've been fighting. Yeah. And most especially supported by donor funds. That mm. is uh, the US, mm-hmm. uh, that is the UK, and other European agencies. But mental illness here mm-hmm. has been ignored a lot. Mm. Uh, but I think it's also as when p- population is growing, then you start you know, focusing on these things because now we are being overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Here we never had any drug abuse issue. We never, but now it's starting. Yeah. Again, it's starting. It's yeah. starting. It's big. Uh, these kids are, it's quite big. are on crack cocaine. And here? Yeah. 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 Like it's a normal, yeah. like on a random Crack money. cocaine? They're going yeah. to rehab. Yeah. In Uganda. It's education. Yeah. The education we are copying and pasting. See, see, now we are following what America is doing. We are following the trend. Crack right? cocaine is crack in cocaine. Uganda. Yes. Yeah. They are going for rehabilitation. They are going. So it's here now. Yeah, it's big. It's big. These kids are going for rehabilitation every day. They're going for rehab. Crack cocaine. Yes, crack cocaine. People have crack cocaine at parties. Yep. There you go. It's cocaine or yeah. crack cocaine? Crack cocaine. All of them. They have everything. They have because uh, crack cocaine is mixing with baking soda. They even have fentanyl. They have everything. 
They have yeah. everything. The only thing you want is here in town. Because cocaine is what you sniff it, and crack cocaine is even the worst version because it makes it with they, they baking powder. They have everything in town. Whatever you want is here in town. You can get it. So so it's people are running mad. They, they're just going crazy. So we are being overwhelmed by cases of mental Ill, illness. Mm. And you see, when you're in the city, and you the, the life in the city in the city is very stressful. Mm. Uh, it's 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 demanding. So people if people who, who are poor try to maintain a mental balance, but a few a few fail and they mm. just go ma- ma- they go crazy. This is all over the world. Mm. Africa didn't have these problems before because we were living in the villages, the countryside. Mm-hmm. So we didn't have a problem of uh, people you know you know uh, 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 going mad. It was just it was just something that. Mm. It was abnormal, so mm-hmm. it was not given attention. So here we we are looking, but now we are starting to improve. Yeah. But the challenge is what we have or share is young people uh, getting diseases that we can prevent, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like HIV, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like cancer. We have still people. You have to change your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You have to exercise. Mm-hmm. You have to stop eating junk food. Mm-hmm. You have to find a solution. You have to stop taking sugar. Mm-hmm. You have to stop taking soda. These people have to know these things, and we can save money for hospital. You know, this is this is what I was talking about. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, I just want to add mm. on to how mental illness is seen in this country. Mm. I unfortunately had a friend who ended up in the in Butavika. Is it? That's our mental hospital. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you get there, the what you see. Let me tell you something. That hospital will humble you. It like puts the fear of God in you. Mm-hmm. It's like you can't even touch a bottle after you leave that place because the amount of people that you see there in rehabilitation, what you see going on, there's like a, a whole private ward and then a public ward. The the what they go through or the the environment that they're in because like there's it's a traumatic. Whole different, it's traumatizing honestly, and it's and these are young people. These are not old people. No, these are young people. These are kids right out of high school. These are kids in universities in campus. You know. And then what parents do is they give up on the child and they just throw him away to rehab or something like that. And then they forget all about the kid. Because even though you take a patient to rehab, you have to keep checking up on them, see how they're mm-hmm. doing, mm-hmm. to see if they're fine, mm-hmm. are they alive, mm-hmm. are they being treated well, are they accepting the rehabilitation and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But some parents give up on the kids and then forget about them. Mm-hmm. So there's that whole issue. And then there's also a stigma in this society where it's like, if you're mentally ill, it's like, it's with... People abroad, it's more like, oh, there's a reason for why mm. you are the way you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But here, it's just like, no, that's a curse. You know, there's someone doing something mm-hmm. in the family. Yeah. Yeah. It's witchcraft. You know, yeah. It can't be real. Yeah. Or maybe you're pretending you want mm-hmm. to get out of something. So mm-hmm. mental illness is not seen as a me- as an illness. It's right. seen more of like, it's an excuse or it's yeah. witchcraft. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. no yeah. in between. But I like the fact that now people are coming up and that, you know, they're embracing yeah. the fact that it's definitely an illness that needs to be looked at. Right. And those are the biggest podcasts you see in Uganda right now coming up are the mental health sort of style yeah. podcasts. Mm. Yeah. And let me just say something. I, I, you know, I went to medical school. Mm. Shout out to um, Medical University of Lublin. I went there, graduated. And um, I... My interest in Uganda has been even before I came to the country. So, of course, there's one medical school here that is accredited, even if you want to go to the United States mm. or Britain, which is McCary. Yeah. Mm. In 1986 or 1987, mm. um, then RM was just now in power. Mm. And their first or second year, the McCary Medical School posted about I don't know, 30 or 40 graduates. Mm. But here's something I'll never forget. Mm. 16 of those graduates had HIV. Wow. Or full-blown AIDS. I didn't know about that. So those medical doctors Mm. died Mm. within four or five years. So imagine 40% of your population is also infected with if you, and you understand how hard medical school is, especially in Africa. Mm. People don't know. You graduate medical school in Africa. It's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Because <laughs> you go for like five to six years mm. and education is pretty excellent at that time. It's pretty good. Because mm. there's so many African doctors coming from Nigeria and the UK. They came from this system. They're in the USA now. Mm. You know? So you, you, you cannot come out of Africa in the 80s and 90s and be an idiot mm. at that time. I don't know about now. 
But at that time, African education was very good on the international stage as far as medicine. Those people died. So imagine the United States medical system. Um, we had a lot of doctors die in COVID, you know, obviously in, in the USA. But this has been happening to the United States. So, I mean, I, I think about how many gifted students there were in those classes. And we never got a chance to see how they could transform. Because you invest a lot into medical students. It's a lot of time that you had to right. do. Right. You know, to go to medical school is one of the mo- it's the hardest thing you can do as a person. Mm-hmm. I, I, I honestly believe. You know, people say starting a business. Mm-hmm. I could say equally starting a business is very difficult. But medical school, mm-hmm. there is nothing like that, that experience. Mm-hmm. Anybody who's been to medical school or dental school, it is something that it changes you. However you come in, you never come out the same. That's the truth. Mm. You come, you never come out the same. Yes. How you can, you appreciate work when you come out of medical school. Right. It is the most hardest thing you can, it's the hardest thing you can do. And then you're going to lose this 40% of their graduating staff to, to age of your age. Yeah. Or related complications. Because you never die of AIDS, you die of something else mm. related to AIDS. Mm. You know, usually it's the flu because mm. your T cells can't fight the, the disease. Yes. So, and so my question is this Museveni, in the 90s and mm. early 2000s, mm. he was accl- he was really acclaimed for beating the yeah. NRM as a, as a, as a, as a uh, political party. Yeah. They had reduced the amount of HIV and AIDS in the country, mm. more so than any country that I've seen in Africa. South right. Africa's having a big right. problem with it too. Right. So what's happened that it's back on the climb? No, it's not, right now it's not that, uh, it's not actually, it's not that alarming. Mm-hmm. But the, the worry is that uh, the numbers are, uh, Again, uh, gaining up a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not really now. It's not. It's not. There's a lot of awareness, but from where we had, because we the target was by 2030, we wanted Uganda to be HIV free. Mm. That, oh, that's the target. But if you see the numbers again shooting up, and you start yeah. worrying a bit, of course now, as I told you, this is the youngest population in the world. Mm. Uganda is the youngest it's population. Second, in the world. I think after after Chad or Niger, I think one of the two. It's the second. Really? Yeah. Man, it's, it's, it should be the youngest. So these young people, and the, the, the age is between 18, 16 to 25. That, that's uh, around uh, 70% of our population or, or 60%, I'm not sure. So these kids really need to be uh, told. But going to the bigger picture, mm-hmm. uh, normally I, I always get surprised when we start uh, uh, discussions where uh, diaspora or Africa or Kenya, Tanzania, we are comparing on who is better. Mm. I remember the president one day, our president one day was asked and said, he was asked, whom do you think is better between Uganda and Kenya? And he said, no, I can't compare two midgets to see who, which one is taller. <laughs> I mean, this, we are all midgets. I mean, so the issues that affect a black man in Africa yeah. are the same problems that face the black man in America, mm. the same in the Caribbean, mm. the same in Pakistan, Everywhere you find a black man, we have the same problems because we are all poor. Yes. We live below average or we're just right there. So when we are discussing these things, they, they cut across. We have to tell our people that you have to change your lifestyles. Yes. Mm. We have to be honest with them. Yes. Uh, that we can fight cancer. We can fight these uh, chronic diseases. We can fight HIV. We can fight these ST, STDs. We can get rid of them. We have to have discipline. You see, everything starts with discipline. Mm-hmm. Discipline, we, and, and the education we have doesn't give us discipline. Discipline tells you that A, B, C, and D, you don't do it. Mm-hmm. And you learn you can't do it. If you know something is bad, you don't do it. Mm-hmm. You avoid it. Yes, I know it's not easy. It's better, it's easily said than done. Yes. Yeah. But we can train our people and say, please, this is going to kill you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our people are the majority dying of these diseases. Mm-hmm. But there's, 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 some, there's something we can do. Mm. But I, I understand the challenge is that uh, when people are poor, they make the hard choices of fast survival. Mm. But we have to tell them that we, uh, as we look for survival, we have to fast, you know, yeah. as well take care of ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very important. Mm-hmm. So the numbers are not alarming as, as, as such. It's not that it's, that it's something shocking or, or you know, it's, it's, it's a picture is bad. But it's something that we need to watch because numbers are, are appreciating. Mm. They're gaining mm-hmm. here and there. Yeah. That's, that's a worry. Uh, and uh, when you saw COVID, you know who died the most in the US? Blacks. Black people? Yes. They have died. And, uh, and uh, 
these are the things we need to to prevent. Mm-hmm. Tell our people we can do better. We can, you know, control these sicknesses, mm-hmm. and it's very easy to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just the discipline. Is that we have to be? We have to love ourselves, and we mm-hmm. say we don't eat refined food. We don't eat sugars. We mm-hmm. exercise. We don't even have to, to be able to, to go to the gym. We can just walk and do exercise by just walking. Mm-hmm. So these are the things we need to tell people. To, because if someone cannot take care of themselves, if someone cannot have the discipline of loving themselves, mm-hmm. of trying to have a better life, then they cannot do anything. Right. Yeah. So They, that, they can't build the community. No, you cannot build a community. You, you, people who are suffering. Yeah, so we said for mediocrity, and a mediocre dies like a mediocre. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, we, we, have, we have a saying in, in black America, yeah. when white people get the sniffles, yes. Black people get the flu. Yeah, they get the flu. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. So, so, so we have to be. We have to understand. We have to look through history and see that we can fight these things. We can make our researches. And I, I like what is happening in America. A lot of our people are getting in research, and they are becoming solid. Here also here in Africa, mm. they, are, they are doing. There is that research which you do, which is Afrocentric. Mm. It is tailored on the people. Mm-hmm. You, you get. I, I met. A, PhD student here a few days at Macquarie University. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's doing uh, a PhD in, uh, I think, something to do with cancer. So I was asking her, I said, why don't you guys do uh, your research that is best on Africa? And she told me, she said, well, he who pays the piper. There you says go. these researches are paid by uh, European funds. So we, the statistics we bring and the data, they, they have to take it and control it. They use it to them to their advantage. But let me ask you a question. Yes, that, that, that's very true. Like every time I see, yeah. <clears throat> and, and I don't want to be canceled for this, but I'm, I'm going to be honest yeah. about what I see about in Kampala. Yeah. Yeah. I see in Kampala yeah. a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Uh, when I see these white parties, I won't call no names. Yeah. In December, mm-hmm. I see brothers buy a table for five million shillings. Mm-hmm. I see brothers bringing in three hundred men night at the bar. I've I've been in those places before. Yeah. So when people say that, oh, black people don't have money, same thing in our community. Yeah. There's a lot of brothers and sisters in Uganda right. that have the money. Yeah. And when I look at the black world and you, you talk about the Africa Free Trade Agreement, it's gonna be three point four trillion dollar spending yeah. power yeah. if that happens. And yeah. if it, you know, people have ratified and things like that. But when yeah. it comes into fruition, yeah. Okay, so then why as a as a community? Because we're talking about well, even before the podcast, we really don't even need anybody else's money. Right. We don't need nobody else's money. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Even this podcast, nobody is funding us to do this. Yeah. Our people fund us to do this. So what is a, such a problem when we have the money? We we have plenty of money, but for when it comes to our own issues, we can't fund it. You, you know, you know what what we have is uh, pocket change. You're from America. Mm-hmm. You know people who have money. The white people have money. Mm-hmm. It's there's money, and there is I think what we call uh, how should I call it? Uh, I don't know what I should call it, but there is money, mm-hmm. and uh, that's why you see when you go to a supermarket here mm-hmm. in one of the remotest countries, according to Europe, European uh, classifications, you find products from a company in America. Yes, in Uganda. Yes. Can you imagine that? How much money they make? Now, this is Uganda. Yes. We have almost 7 billion people in the, on this planet. Yes. Now, these guys can manage to make sure their products go to every part of, of the world. Mm-hmm. Look at Twitter. Yes. Look at Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's a household gadget in everywhere. Mm-hmm. Now, that, that is money. Yeah. What we have here is pocket change. This is pocket change. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is not money. Uh, so, but see, the problem is not money. As you were saying about your about your show, it's the will. Yes, it's the will and the discipline. These are the two things: will and discipline. Mm-hmm. Discipline. We must first build the discipline. Mm-hmm. Once we have the discipline, because white people got free labor, free raw materials. Yes, and build structures and stayed with them, train their children to inherit the same structures. Yes, build them. The Bush family, if Bush dies. The child will take one. Yes. And he will build the same system yes. until the other kids will come and do the yes. same thing. Here, we didn't do the same. So, right. but we have to, to make sure we first have the discipline. Yes. We must be able to work with each other. Yes. We must be able to sacrifice. Yes. These are the things. And we can get out of poverty. Yes. If we don't get out of poverty, anything comes to us. We were lucky here in Africa, COVID did not do anything to us because we still have a lot of nature. We can. You know, just hide away from it. Yes. 
But if we were actually in a, in a setup like in America, we'd all be wiped out. It would just yes. be a few numbers left. Yes. Because we'll be poor. I, 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 I was in Pakistan and I saw this is a group of black people. They, they were slaves, they were descendants of slaves. They were from uh, Mombasa, most of them. Mm-hmm. They were called, I think, I think they were called Yazidis. Or yeah, yeah. But if you see the state they live in, you can't even go home and sleep. Whoa. So a- any disease that comes, it looks for poor people. Rich people don't normally get sick. They, they get hy- hypertension, they get heart attacks. But these diseases of lifestyle, they, 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 f- they come from the poor. Yeah, they, they come from the poor. And we're the poor. Yeah, so, so that's what I think. Yeah. Let me just say this about pocket change. And I, I, I do agree that we have less. But when I look at, you know, us as a group, mm. and I'm not saying that I disagree with you, mm. but I honestly believe mm. it can become real money. Yep. And I'm, I'm a living witness to that. Yep. I had nothing when I was here first in 2000. Joan would tell you we, we, we had any, we still were still broke, but right. mm. yeah. But, no, it's a, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, mm. You, you, you gave us a great talk about education mm. and discipline. Mm. And the, the thing that is real money or pocket change, it's a mindset. Mm. Pocket change mindset brings a pocket change reality. Mm. And real money mindset brings that. Because first you got to be real in your mind first right. before to have it in fruition. Mm. And, 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 and one of the issues that I think that we're really seeing when it comes to our issues we are very apathetic towards our own issues and for our own uh, situations. Mm. Um, like you were talking about with the Russia-Ukraine thing. Mm. We, we're very, you know, personable or we're very energetic about supporting mm. Ukraine over Russia. Mm. Never mind Ukraine is treating the blacks bad and can, mm. they can't get out of there. Mm. Things like that, right? But when it comes to our issues, mm. we're apathetic. And one of the reasons that blacks are at the bottom is because we care more about other people's issues yeah. than our own. Yeah. And once we start to do that, that pocket change will become That's true. real money. And it goes back to the part of, part of, point, of, point of discipline, the point of sacrificing and, and, and wanting to have some incentivization. And one thing I like about Africa and the continent of Uganda as a whole, you can be your own person here. Mm-hmm. You, you, can, you, can, you, can, you, you can't be your own person in Dubai for the most part. Mm-hmm. But here you can. And I think, I'm not trying to say that's an excuse. But we just need to tell people the truth. Listen, here as a community, you're at the bottom. Mm. Let's try to build the community. If we fight while trying to do it, let us fight. But we'll yeah. fight together. Yeah. You see? Yeah. If we're going to call names, let us call names. But after calling names, we will come back. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. we're going to go through that. But I think what happens is we don't have people who want to get into the ring. Yeah. We, the Pan-African world and the black community, whoever's going to stick there, not everybody's going to be degree. Yeah. We need to get into the ring. If they're going to fight, let them fight it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Black people need to get out of a theory. Yeah. Black people need to get it together and fight. That's All true. of us. Nigerians, Ugandans, Kenyans. They're going to talk trash. Okay. Yeah. Let's insult each other and get through with that. After all of that, yeah. then we start working. Yeah. We pick our size, who we can do something with. Okay, y'all like this side better, like this side better. But until we tell people that, we're always going to be at that bottom there. And we're always going to be thinking with a pocket change mindset. Mm. Black people got to know that you can swing the bat like anybody else. Yeah. We got to do that. Mm. Otherwise, we're going to never take that pocket change into the next level. But it has to start from the mentality first. Right, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. all I have to say about that. That's right. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to... To talk about the topic of HIV, I remember in the 19, is it 80 something, mm. you know, Philip Lutaya? Yes, yes, the musician. Yeah, the one who came out that he was um, yes, HIV yes. positive. Yes, I yes, think so. that was like the one person who, who was openly talking about HIV the way he did. Mm. And then he also did a whole album around it. Mm. I think then people started like looking at HIV in a different way mm. and started being more careful and whatnot. Mm. I feel like now the young people, like you said, have, have come more. Is he still living? No, he, no died. he died. He died. Okay. He died when he was 35, was it? Or oh, he was yeah. a bit older. I think he was a bit, I know. I know. I well, the HIV did make him look older a bit. Yeah. Correct us if He I passed remember. away. Because he of, did. He passed mm, away because yeah. of HIV. Yeah. But uh, he did come out and say he had HIV and he made a whole album about it. Okay. And now there's a there's an organization in his name yeah. still yeah. To, doing something for mm. HIV people yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so then people, I remember it back then because like, 
my parents were listening to his music and whatnot. Yeah. So there was fear instilled in us about, you know, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you know, this guy, he did this, blah, 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 yeah. so you have to be very careful. So I feel like that generation now kind of knew what HIV was and they mm. were very fearful of it. But this generation now is we're more relaxed and people, do you know that people who look healthier with HIV? Like yeah, because the of the therapy. medications that are available yeah. now. Yeah. And 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 we are talking, you know, it's, it, when we talk about only HIV, because there are ST STDs oh, yeah, yeah. and that. STIs. Mm. These are they are those which are very brutal. Yes, and uh, uh, they, they they do affect black people a lot uh, mm. worldwide. Oh yeah. So uh, such such uh, illnesses uh, are, are something that the medical world uh, has like like HIV. Now they got uh, they are trying to do. They have, I think, they have cured like five people through a bone marrow transplant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's, there's there's some hope and there's uh, the picture looks good. Mm-hmm. But uh, as as we were saying, we are looking towards uh, the white scholars to save us. Mm-hmm. Here. We are waiting for them. Makere is doing something good. They they are doing research, and uh, I think so many universities in Africa. But the the funding still comes the other side. Mm-hmm. We wait for the funding to come in. So the first thing we have to do is to change our lifestyles, mm-hmm. tell the people you have to do it, you have to exercise, you have to take care of yourself, you have to eat well, you have to, and you know, America is, is always on junk food. Always, yeah. yeah. The poor people in America, you know, so, so they have to go Everything to junk is junk food. <laughs> That's death. Shout That's out to my food. chef. He yeah. takes care of it. <laughs> but does he cook you healthy food? Of course. Right. Chef yeah. Gilbert. the chef out right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is something we need to, 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 to do. And most especially here, I mean, uh, in our black community. Yes. And of course, poor white people are also having the same challenges mm. because this, this, this doesn't segregate these uh, illnesses. Don't segregate you based on race. Mm-hmm. No, they take you when you're poor, when you can't afford a decent me- me- medical care. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, here if you go to our hospitals here, government hospital, people are rotting away, uh, suffering yeah. from cancer. Uh, you know, small thing, and you know, poor. You know, uh, they are not sensitized. Mm. About the dangers of being obese, mm. and you find we still have cultures where uh, it's celebrated to be obese, to be mm. fat, you know, be fat, yeah. you know. And these people are having all kinds of complications, illnesses, yeah, especially my, among, among my people. These people are huge, and, and they're dying. Yeah, they're getting heart attacks. You know, so these are things we need to change. Yeah, yeah I, I've even seen no offense, but I've even seen like uh, memes. Of like what certain women look like in in that, that part of the country if yeah. they gain weight or yeah. if they have a baby, yeah. I, I see it from not me, the Ugandans. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. this is yeah. people from other tribes make yeah. fun of. Yeah, there's yeah. a whole tribe that yeah. fattens you up. Yeah, if you're skinny. Yeah, but even here in in the African culture, in, in, in most uh, you know, uh, fat women were celebrated mm. in most of them, not all of them. So they were celebrated. They would say, "I want some meat." But that's the same thing, you know, with a, with a all black society. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I want some it's meat. The same thing with African Americans. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, oh, girl, right. you thick. Yeah, there you go. Girl, you too skinny, girl. <laughs> Ain't no man gonna want nobody skinny like you. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's uh, that's a habit for for sickness, and we have to tell people, no, this is not okay. Yes, These people are going to die. Yes, they're going to get cardiac arrest and die in just a few weeks and months and years. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's what I think. Okay. Um, it's okay. a great, it's a great topic. Again, great episode. It's not, it's, it's like I said. That's why the diversity, yeah. King Gonda is getting. Y'all need to pay us <laughs> for all of this. But uh, thanks, Professor. That's gonna be your new no, name. I'm not a now. professor. I'm <laughs> just a regular guy. <laughs> <laughs> professor amongst Negroes. <laughs> <laughs> your PhD in Negroology. No, 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 no. I'm just a regular guy. You know. Yeah. Trying to survive. Any yeah. last remarks, guys, about this? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I just uh, want to say it's always uh, always a pleasure talking to people. I am passionate about white people. And sometimes when I speak, some people might uh, think I'm uh, black, you know, whatever, extremist. But uh, this is what we were talking about. You mean passionate for black people? No, I'm saying I'm passionate about humanity, poor yeah, people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you start talking about poor people, you find that majority of them are black. So mm. at the end of the day, you end up looking racist. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. anyone that is poor, I think, has been unjustly done, you know, and harmed. And I feel compassionate for them. Mm. So, uh, 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 you know, I always, normally when I go to different places, I look out in the poor communities and I, I always see people struggling and mm. can't afford things. So, but it's always a pleasure talking to you, a pleasure talking to you all. Um, always, and uh, 
it's not that I know it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a learning experience. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I just go through the comments when people are responding, and I learn a lot from them. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, uh, I thank you for sending out the, your feedback. Mm-hmm. It's very important mm-hmm. because it teaches us as well. It makes mm-hmm. us better. Yeah, yeah, it helps Definitely. us improve. Yeah. So and I, and I and I wish you well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm speechless. Okay. Again. For once. No, oh, this is the second time. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think my last remark would be to the ladies. I feel if the ladies watching us, you have to you have to be very careful. You have to take care of yourself. You have no one is going to take care of you like you take care of yourself. You have to step ahead, like be in front of this thing mm. and demand, you know. I don't want to say it, but you have to be very careful. Is what I'm saying. And also start dating men who put your health first. Start dealing with men who are mm. considerate about your health and whatever comes with it. But yeah, mm-hmm. guys, if you have anything you'd like to share with us, you can send us an email at teamkenganda at gmail.com and follow us on all our social media pages at Kenganda Nation. Mr. Ampora, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter. My handle is African Brother. Sheru Rampora, Katra Gure, and mm. my name's. I think she will put them on the screen for you guys. Mm-hmm. To Plus see. the email. The email is in pogord at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Peace. Bye.